1 Samuel chapter 28 In those days the Philistines gathered their forces to fight against Israel. Achish said to David, You must understand that you and your men will accompany me in the army. David said, Then you will see for yourself what your servant can do. Achish replied, Very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in his own town of Ramah. Saul had expelled the mediums and the spiritists from the land. The Philistines assembled and came up to camp at Shunem, while Saul gathered all Israel and set up camp at Gilboa. When Saul saw the Philistine army, he was afraid. Terror filled his heart. He inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams or Urim or Thummim or prophets. Saul said to his attendants, Find me a woman who's a medium, so that I may go and inquire of her. There's one in Endor, they said. So Saul disguised himself, putting on other clothes, and at night he and two men went to the woman. Consult the spirit for me, he said, and bring up for me the one that I name. The woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done. He has cut off the mediums and spiritists from the land. Why have you set a trap for my life to bring about my death? Saul swore to her by the Lord, As surely as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Samuel, he said. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice and said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said, I see a ghostly figure coming up out of the earth. What does he look like? he asked. He looks like an old man wearing a robe, she said. Then Saul knew it was Samuel, and he bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the floor. Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? I'm in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has departed from me. He no longer answers me, either by prophets or by dreams. So I've called on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, Why do you consult me, now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done what he predicted through me. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David. Because you did not obey the Lord or carry out his fierce wrath against the Amalekites, the Lord has done this to you today. The Lord will deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Immediately, Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of Samuel's words. His strength was gone, for he had eaten nothing all that day and all that night. When the woman came to Saul and saw that he was greatly shaken, she said, Look, your servant has obeyed you. I took my life in my hands and did what you told me to do. Now please listen to your servant and let me give you some food so that you may eat and have the strength to go on your way. He refused and said, I will not eat. But his men joined the woman in urging him, and he listened to them. He got up from the ground and sat on a couch. The woman had a fattened calf at the house, which she butchered at once. She took some flour, kneaded it, and baked bread without yeast. Then she set it before Saul and his men, and they ate. That same night they got up and left. Now, I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible. And in the NIV, she's called um, a medium. In the King James, she's called a witch. I grew up listening to the narrative about the witch of Endor. And so whichever the case, she was probably not a, a Wiccan per se, but she was definitely worshiping someone other than the living God because she was endeavoring in things that were forbidden in the law of Moses. And so this chapter raises a lot of questions. Can a medium actually carry out the request and bring up 
someone who's dead from the dead and interact with them? Uh, We don't know. But this chapter seems to um, affirm that at least in this case, this lady brought up Samuel. Now, was it the will of the Lord that Samuel would come? Apparently it was. Now, when I was young, I was taught that it wasn't really Samuel that came up, that it was a demon. But as you go through the language here, the person who came up is repeatedly referred to as Samuel. Not only that, this Samuel or the spirit of Samuel successfully prophesies the future to Saul. And so let's go through this chapter again. In verse 1, in those days, the Philistines gathered their forces to fight against Israel. And so this uh, king of Gath, Achish, says to David, you know, you and your men have got to accompany me to the battle. And David says, I'm in. And uh, Achish says, great, I'm going to make you my bodyguard. So that's where we leave uh, David and the king of Gath. But in verse 3, we, we change scenes and it says Samuel was dead. And Saul had expelled all the mediums and spiritists from the land. The Philistines were assembled and came up to camp. And when Saul saw the Philistine army, he was afraid. And so he tried to inquire of the Lord, but the Lord wouldn't answer him through um, direct means or through dreams or the the priestly uh, Urim and Thummim or through prophets. There was no way Yahweh was answering Saul because he was done with Saul. And so Saul said to his attendants, go find me a medium or which, so that I may inquire of her. And they said, there's one at Endor. And so Saul disguises himself and um, gets two of his companions, two men to go with him. And they go and find the woman. And Saul says, consult a spirit for me and bring up for me the one I name. And the woman said, you know, that Saul has forbidden this, you know, and he's gotten rid of all the, all the mediums and the spiritists out of the, out of the land. And you're trying to trap me. And Saul swears by the name of Yahweh that she will not be punished for this. And so in Saul's apostasy, he's he's, um, swearing an oath in the name of Yahweh to do something that Yahweh forbids. And so the woman is uh, convinced. She says, who do you want me to bring up? He says, bring up Samuel. Verse 12 says, when the woman saw Samuel, now just stop right there. It doesn't say when the woman saw a demon. It doesn't say when the woman saw a, an image. It doesn't say that it was an illusion that the woman created. It says the woman saw Samuel. And so I'm not endorsing mediums or spiritists. But in this case, it seems that indeed Samuel appeared. Now, whether the woman had anything to do with it or the Lord just sovereignly did this, we don't know. But the woman uh, was told to bring up Samuel, and lo and behold, Samuel shows up. So the, the first thing Samuel does is apparently tells this woman, hey, this is Saul with you. And so she looks at Saul and says, why have you deceived me? You're Saul. And uh, the king says, don't be afraid. What do you see? And so the woman describes Samuel coming up and Saul knew it was Samuel. And then in verse 15, Samuel spoke to Saul directly. This is what he said. Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And so once again, it's very troubling. Apparently, uh, Samuel was upset. The spirit of Samuel, the the deceased spirit of Samuel, was upset with Saul for um, disturbing him, Samuel's words, not mine, and bringing him up, quote unquote, Samuel's words. So apparently this transaction Samuel is is attributing to Saul's efforts through the medium. And Saul responds. He says, I'm in great distress. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has departed from me. He won't answer me. And so I've called on you asking what to do. And Samuel is ticked. He says, why do you consult me now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done what he predicted through me, reminding Saul of the prophecy that he had given during his life. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David, because you didn't obey the Lord and carry out his wrath against the Amalekites. And so it goes on, and Samuel prophesies the future at this point. The spirit of Samuel, through the medium, we assume, prophesies the following. He says, the Lord will deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. 
the Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. So Samuel literally prophesies Saul's death and the death of his sons. And then Samuel dematerializes, disappears, goes back to wherever he was. However, and uh, this witch slash medium tries to comfort Saul, hoping he's not going to execute her. And uh, he doesn't. He's all depressed. That's how we end this. What a terrible chapter of apostasy on Saul's part. Yeah, it is really sad that he wasn't getting a response from the Lord. But to turn to mediums and spiritists that he knew were out of the will of God and were contrary to the law of Moses, this was just a direct disobedience to what Saul knew to be right. And so one more charge against Saul. And in this case, Samuel rebukes him and he says, um, you're going to die tomorrow. It's over, Saul. The, you know, the, uh, the grace is lifted. Now it's, it's time. And so we end this chapter, a very sad note, um, with Saul's deception of the, the lady at Endor with her um, consulting the spirit of Samuel for Saul and then Samuel prophesying Saul's death. And Lord, we just see this sad trajectory once again of Saul. Lord, and once again, we ask you to examine our lives and see if there's anything in us that's out of order. Lord, bring conviction and correction where it's needed so that we don't continue on to apostasy and death. Lord, um, Saul's situation is a terrible example of what can happen when we become estranged with you. God, forgive us. Reconcile us where it's needed. Help us, Lord. Draw us in Jesus' name. Amen.